on the contrary, what makes us attractive as a potential partner is the degree to which we can recognize our own failings. <laughs> I was waiting for the buildup. What makes us attractive is we can recognize our own failings. Okay, no, way off the mark. What's up, guys? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today's video, I'm going to be reacting to one of these little animated cartoons, School of Life, How to Seduce Someone on a Date. Okay, just banged number 1,608, 19-year-old with fake tits. That was fucking dope. And let's jump in. On a first date with someone we like, we really want, of course, for the evening to go well. Right off the bat, I've probably done over a thousand dates. Stick to drinks and coffee for the first dates. Trust me on this, okay? If anyone saw me on Valuetainment, the girls on the show were talking about how if there's a restaurant, they're afraid to order stuff that might cost a lot. Okay, people are distracted with the meal. Okay, it's hard to focus on getting to know each other and it takes longer. Okay, so just stick to either coffee or drinks for the first date. You don't need to go out for a fancy dinner on the first date. If the girl suggests that, say, hey, I just prefer to do coffee or drinks the first date. There are many varied bits of advice in circulation. Casanova Survival Guide. Quick side note. The great Casanova, okay, only did 143 lifetime lay count, which is still good considering there was no online game or texting, but I just want to put that out there. He says that in his memoirs. Don't do all the talking. Be funny and light. Ask them about themselves. Don't pry. Select a small, perhaps Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Suggest a small Italian restaurant. Don't pry. Hey, these are stupid guidelines. Okay, let's, let's just hear the strategy here. Leave a generous tip. Leave a generous tip. See, there's much difference between like the Disney narrative fairy tale, like, yeah, you're going to go out for a nice dinner. You're going to leave a great tip. You're going to hold the doors. Sparks are going to fly. You're going to kiss her on her doorstep. And then, you know, you'll be beaming with the light the following day. It's not how this shit works. Okay. The two biggest things you must do on a date are to sexualize, AKA make things non-platonically. That's done in two ways through sexual innuendos and sexualizing the conversation, usually in the form of sexual jokes. And you can also implement light physicality, tapping her on the side, kicking her onto the table, touching her hand across the table, letting go, etc. The second biggest thing you must do is frame it so that you guys are going to be going back to your house afterwards. You don't want a date that leads to nowhere. It's the point of the game isn't just to fucking keep talking and talking and then, oh, you've won because you've talked for two hours or three hours. Your dates should last between 45 and 75 minutes maximum. It should be one or two drinks or one coffee. Okay, this is the kind of benchmark. And you need to be framing the idea of her coming home with you after the date, which is going to prompt objections, such as her not feeling safe. Well, I don't know if it's okay to go home with you. I don't really know you. Or about her not wanting to look slutty. Okay, well, I don't go home with guys I just met. I'm not that kind of girl, et cetera. Or they might say, oh, I have to be up early, et cetera, et cetera. I've identified what those major objections are. I teach guys in my course how to overcome those and still able to bring the girl back home. If you want to learn my exact strategy for approaching a girl, vibing, escalating, and taking her back home from bars, clubs, malls, or on the streets, and want a dating coach to be there by your side, teaching you every step of the way, then click the link up here and book an application call with me. The venue selection isn't that important. You can pick any coffee or drink spot, doesn't really matter. And again, you want to adhere to those time constraints, sexualize, and see the pull to go back home. And nice shoes. We're understandably nervous. We're trying to do something which is very strange and tricky. It's not very strange and tricky either. You guys shouldn't put pressure on themselves. Okay, the girl's agreeing to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Her friends aren't there. You're presumably near your house. She has time to get to know you. There's no distractions. She presumably is down to hook up with you on some level and presumably has time afterwards. Okay, so you want to... Move things forward, okay, I teach you guys how to stack conversational topics, otherwise known as threads, so that they never run out of things to say, but also that sexualization and framing it back home. Those are the two big key pieces that most guys miss, okay? If you just keep it purely platonic, she's going to see you platonically and friend zone you potentially. If you don't frame it for her to come home with you, it's going to be a date leading to nowhere. She's going to excuse herself at the end or, or you will part ways and you won't hook up with her. I can teach you the full strategy inside either my Occam's Razor course or Leads Machine course. I teach all of date strategy in both those, or you can sign up for a free 30 minute call to learn my whole system. Okay, the link's in the description for those. Seduce another person. Not so much in the narrow and potentially sinister sense of trying to beguile them into having sex with us, 
but in a larger, more fundamental way of getting them to like us. A date is in essence an audition. Much more than we usually admit, we're trying to imagine each other as prospective long-term partners. Again, that's not necessarily true either. Okay, a lot of people, especially in 2023, aren't necessarily looking for long-term partners. You should keep things light and fun and entertaining so that she's laughing and having a good time. Okay, you don't need to, this isn't the time to shine and show that you can be a good father or something like that. Seduction, <laughs> in its larger, more important sense, means gradually persuading someone that we're a plausible candidate with whom to be in a relationship. The question then is, what are the things that might properly show us in this light? What do we need to do to get them on board? There are two central priorities. The first is to show that we have a good relationship to ourselves. This doesn't involve saying how wonderful we are or what exciting lives we lead. Our culture hints that it might be seductive to say things like, I love Paris's museums or I'm excellent at swimming in moonlit lakes. But such statements don't really convey that we will be pleasant or even bearable to live with day to day. On the contrary, what makes us attractive as a potential partner is the degree to which we can recognize our own failings. <laughs> I was waiting for the build-up. What makes us attractive is we can recognize our own failings. Okay, no, way off the mark. And by the way, his little point about showcasing different strengths and different cool stuff you have going on, he's poking at demonstrations of higher value. Those work wonders, both in cold approaches and on dates, but they have to be done correctly. Okay, the thing that you're conveying about your value should be in the background of the story and conveyed indirectly, not the direct focus of the story. Okay, there's a fine line between bragging, okay, and, and all this bradagio and all, all this stuff like that. That's what Andrew Tate was doing. Like, look at my cars, look at my planes, look at my life, look how cool I am. That is try hard, and that will actually turn girls off. Okay, instead, you should be working cool things into the story, okay, that are going to convey value without overtly bragging. And I don't know where he's going with this shit about being able to recognize your failures and shortcomings, but let, you know, I, I'm immediately going to say that's way off the mark. Okay, that's that's not the the time to, you know, showcase humility and and faults and stuff like this. You don't want to demonstrate lower value. Okay, you don't want to convey that you're low value or, or a bad mate here. But let's see where he's going with this. It's not that we should exhibit our flaws. And again, like the way he's even talking, right? Like with this like professional animations and his accent, this is going to sound like good advice on the surface. Getting furious with a waiter, starting to weep about an old friend who let us down or going on throughout the first course about an insult at work that happened years ago. This is <laughs> weakness unbound, given total victory. What is really sweet and charming, that is powerfully reassuring, is weakness handled strongly. For example, it can be hugely seductive to drop in with an air of confidence and wit. You know, coming here made me a bit nervous. That's a sign both of insight and strength. We're not simply being nervous, gulping down a cocktail or frantically insisting that the decor is wonderful. We're vulnerable but have an overview on our anxieties and the capacity to handle them lightly. It can be equally seductive to mention in passing as you can imagine, after that, I had a little temper tantrum with myself, but in a profoundly calm and smiling tone that indicates both an accurate ability to dislike oneself at points and a mature ability to digest and learn from one's less impressive moments. See, this is stupid, okay? A lot of coaches are like arming guys with lines or little tricks, okay? I've always been very anti-gamey, fancy, gimmicky nonsense. It comes from the wrong frame. It comes from the frame of, look, I'm going to use my little trick now. And it signifies low value implicitly because, okay, here, here's the girl on the pedestal. And you're like, let me try this trick. Let me try this trick. Uh, this video said this trick. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try this line. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try this line. Todd V. Dating is like case in point. His whole game revolves around fancy, gimmicky nonsense. And it works in reverse, okay, because girls are actually off put by that type of behavior. Now he's trying to arm guys with lines, oh, I was nervous to come here. Okay, but well, you're showcasing that you're aware of your anxiety, so that's supposed to be attractive. Again, too contrived. The, the mindset should be, I'm going to bang this girl for sure. She's going to love me. It's going to go awesome. It doesn't matter what I say or do. I'm just going to make sure I sexualize, you know, keep the conversation going, having fun, which is not a big deal. 
and set it up for her to come home with me, answer objections, come home with me. That's it. Okay. And there's devils, you know, the devils in the details there, which I'm not going to go fully into on this video here, but that's it. You don't need to be coming up with a bunch of clever lines to show humility about shortcomings. That's really dumb. Productive self-revelation is the idea. I'm a touch crazy, of course, but very much sane enough to tell you about it in a modest and unhysterical way. Now he wants guys to go and say, I'm a touch crazy, but sane enough to tell you about it. Yeah, that's going to be a red flag. <laughs> if you say that to a girl, she's going to be like, okay, the stranger's telling me that he's crazy, but that he's sane enough to explain it. Okay, maybe he's a fucking serial killer or something. That's weird. I don't feel safe. And you're going to invite her home? Yeah, good luck. We're indicating <laughs> that we have the best possible relationship with our own shadow sides. The second hugely seductive move is to signal that we view the other person with a mixture of tenderness and realism. It's often <laughs> imagined that it'll be seductive. This is so stupid. Convey an air of adoration to hint that the other strikes us as exceptionally attractive or accomplished. But surprisingly, it's deeply worrying to be obviously adored because everyone from the inside knows very well that they don't deserve intense acclaim, are often disappointing and sometimes quite simply pitiful. <laughs> yeah, so you shouldn't shower the woman with gifts. I agree with that. Or, or kiss her ass. Okay, that's going to be unattractive. So, seduction involves suggesting both that one likes the other person a lot and yet can see their frailties clearly enough. Sounds like push-pull. Okay, more nonsense. Oh, I like you a lot, but I see your frailties sure enough. She's like, wait, does he like me or not? Because I just got pushed in both directions. Don't do push-pull, it's stupid. You don't need to say, hey, I don't know if this is going to work out. Hey, uh, I think I just see you as a sister. Uh, I think we'll just stay friends. No, it's fucking stupid. Don't do that. One can cope with them and forgive them with gentle indulgence. One might, towards the end of the evening, drop in a small warm tease that alludes to our understanding of some less-than-perfect side of them. Again, th this is like total fairy tale land. Okay, I give guys a structured plan that gets them taking home like 75 to 80% of the dates they go on. Okay, so that means four girls out of five will come back home with you after the drinks or coffee if you follow what I do. Okay, you can't help that 20% that's going to have a hard rule about not going home with guys on the first date, etc. Okay, to learn that, check out Occam's Razor Elite's machine in the description, or you can jump on the eight-week program, which is the industry-leading program to get the entire system and solution. Okay, you can book a free 30-minute call with the link in the description. Date under the duvet, feeling a bit sorry for yourself after that, we might ask, with a benign smile. Such a gesture implies that we like another person, not under a mistaken notion that they are flawless, but with a full, unfrightened appreciation of their frailties. That ends up being powerfully seductive, because it is, first and foremost, reassuring. It suggests the ideal way that we would like someone to view us within the testing conditions of a real relationship. We crave, not admiration. Again, you don't need to try to spot all of a girl's flaws and frailties on a first date and be like, oh yeah, I actually like those things. No, just keep it light and fun moving forward, frame it back home. If you want to learn my exact strategy for approaching a girl, vibing, escalating, and taking her back home from bars, clubs, malls, or on the streets, and want a dating coach to be there by your side, teaching you every step of the way, Click the link and book an application call with me. But to be properly known, and yet still liked and forgiven. Many things are in the moment exciting, but self-knowledge and perceptive generosity are the most properly seductive things in the world, because they are what make life with another person bearable. They are what indicate <laughs> that we have what it would take to embark on the long, exciting, beautiful, and intermittently so, okay, the takeaways are go to a small Italian place, uh, tell her that you were nervous, but you came anyways. Tell her you're crazy, but sane enough to tell her about your craziness. The chick arriving here. It's a repeat, so 1609 will have to wait. And then tell her that you enjoy her, her good qualities plus her shortcomings, and then off you go into the sunset. Nope, that's all BS, okay? Get on one of those calls to learn how it really works. So you can really start actually getting laid for most of your dates. Okay, watch my video on the end screen on dates. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys on a video soon. Take care. And Jay don't stand in line. I ain't never had to wait. I'm the realest in this game. I ain't never had to fake.
Just take a look at the scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.